Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is the Chevy Spark, the most desirable vehicle that Chevrolet has ever made. Okay, it's not, but this is a really great car when times are tough and interest rates are high and you're looking to save costs because everything about this can help you save costs, but it's also something that does a lot more than small cars of the past have done. So we're gonna talk about it in depth, in detail in this video. And if you have questions, make sure you let me know in the comments below because not only will I try to answer them there, I will also come back to this vehicle in future videos. And I can do that because I'm filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals where they sell not only this car, but all kinds of cars in its class. So you can find the car that you need. And like I said, if you have questions, they'll allow me to come back and make sure I get those answers for you. So let's get going with the in-depth review of the Chevy Spark. So I'm gonna start here at the very front. Underneath this hood is a fire-breathing engine that makes 98 horsepower. Now you may be thinking 98 horsepower isn't enough, but the funny thing about that exact number is that's what my very first car made when I first started driving. It was a six passenger Buick Century. So keep in mind that although this is a small power number for today's cars, it's a much smaller car and power to weight ratio, it's actually pretty good. This thing weighs just over 2,200 pounds and that's, like I said, good power to weight ratio. But that 98 horsepower here, trust me, it's a lot quicker and a lot better top speed than my 98 horsepower six passenger Buick Century of the past. So you do have an economical engine here and that's a good thing. It saves you in fuel costs and it can save you in insurance costs as well. Now a couple things I want to point out the front here, you can't see them right now because the headlights aren't on, but you have what's called projector beam headlights here. So projector beam headlights, even though they're halogen headlights, used to be the upgrade even not that long ago. I had a Chevy Colorado in 2018 with projector beam headlights and it was the Z71 package that had that, not the lower trims. So not that long ago, these projector beam headlights were the up-class headlight and on this Chevy Spark, they are here on this LT model. You've also got nice LED lights down here, which is your daytime running light. They're a little bit tough to see there, but of course it gives you that modern look as well. So you've got some nice modern features in here that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And that's really the story of this car. A number of features that you wouldn't expect in a small vehicle are in this. Let's take a look at the trunk now as well. All right, the back end of this car, this is a hatchback and it's a modern hatchback which has that SUV type shape. It's that squared off just like all of the bigger SUVs and you gain all the benefits of an SUV only smaller. You still have a very square opening here and yes, it's a small trunk that's a deep trunk but for all your daily grocery shopping, this works great and the best thing is this panel pops out, these seats fold down and all of a sudden you have this massive opening where you can start to take things that the average sedan buyer can't take because you've got the big opening, the big folding trunk. So when you need the space, you can create it here. And that's another thing that's great about the Chevy Spark. Of course, the one thing you're gonna be concerned about is overall backseat space. Well, first of all, this looks like a two door because it has a door handle right there. Your second door handle is up here. And when I open that up, I have that seat set for me. I'm a six footer out front. And what happens when I sit back here? Well, as a six footer, I actually fit, the seat is carved out and my legs fit. So a six footer with a six footer. Headroom is actually fine as well. I can fit my whole palm of my hand above my head. So again, is it gonna be super comfortable for a six footer to sit behind a six footer for long trips? It's not, but you can fit a six footer back here. And these seats have the latch system, which means you can fit modern child seats in here. And then because you don't have a lot of details in the door, like door pockets or cup holders in the door, you have the illusion of width. It gives you a little bit more space that way. There is a cup holder here in the center. We can show you that a little bit later, but overall you have enough space to fit an adult in front an adult in back. And really that's what you need for probably a car that's gonna be used mostly around town and shorter highway trips rather than long multi-day adventures. So now let's take a look inside the Chevy Spark. Before we do that, I wanna show you what the key fob looks like because if we can get it here, let's see if we can get a little more light on there. There we go, that's what the key fob looks like. Now this is a jackknife style key, Chevy logo on the back. It doesn't say Spark or anything, it just looks like a Chevy key. As you press that there, you have the jackknife style key that comes out. You don't need the key to get into the car. You can hit just the unlock button or lock button right there, but you will need the key to start the car. So we're gonna pop out that jackknife style key, we'll open the door and we'll jump in here. First of all, very comfortable seats for a small car. A lot of times on the smallest cars, they used to really save a lot of money in the seat padding and they were just flat out uncomfortable. That's not the case here. So let's jump in and show you around here. 
All right, as we do that, I'm gonna go wide angle here so you can see a little bit more. And you know what? I wanted to make sure I showed you the back seat uh, cup holder before we go too far. So there's the back seat. Let's try to get down there. There's that cup holder in the center there. Camera angle is a little awkward, but there is a space there. There's no uh, armrest in there, and I think that's fine. That's, uh, you know, it just works totally fine. So coming back around here, a couple things you're gonna notice here. First of all, in an inexpensive car, Let's just uh, set the key in there. We're going to turn it to the on position. So in an inexpensive car, one thing you're going to find is hard plastics everywhere. Now, if you're the kind of person that gets in a car and touches the dash on everything to see how the quality of everything is, you're going to find that these are hard plastics instead of soft, rubbery feeling materials. That's just the one thing they do in less expensive cars. I don't think it matters. I don't think anybody goes up here and goes, oh, that's not, you know, nice feeling. And that's the thing. It isn't nice feeling, although it does have a texture and it actually looks quite nice. Let me see if I can zoom into that texture there. There we go. You can sort of see that texture there. So again, the overall look of this car is actually pretty impressive. But to be fair, they are there are some cost cutting measures in these economy cars. And I don't think that's the end of the world. It does have nice features here. There's a space to put a, a little bit of stuff up there. Um, you've got a really nice screen here. So let's just see if I can throw it in reverse from park. I can. And that should bring up the, no, I have to start it. So again, can't show you the backup camera, but it is a clear backup camera in here. I can't show it without starting the car because we're indoors and I've got other people around here. I won't start it up right now, uh, but we'll show you that later. But this screen is actually very, very good. So you've got your sort of typical AM, FM. You can go to, this is your home screen there, but you've got your AM, FM, you have Bluetooth, streaming audio. So all the kinds of stuff that you would expect to have here. Uh, in this type of stereo. Now it does have a navigation button. The navigation button doesn't offer you proper navigation like here, but stay tuned because I'll show you how you can get that very easily. So first of all, there is OnStar navigation. We'll talk about OnStar in a second. The big thing I like about this is if we go back to the home and, oops, back to the home, you will see that you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Android Auto there, Apple CarPlay there. So if you think about it, if you use your cell phone, plug it in here, you have Google Maps, Apple Maps, which are the most up-to-date maps in the world, and they're included. Now, of course, you can get things like OnStar. You can even get things like OnStar to give you Wi-Fi in this car. Now, for most of us, it's cheaper for our cell phone to have a better data plan than for our car to have a data plan, but you have those kinds of options in there as well. And I've used it in a pickup truck I used to own where I had uh, OnStar service sometimes where I didn't have cell service. So something to keep in mind if you just want to throw it on for a month here or there. Uh, they also give you protections, various protections uh, that you can do. So you can sign up for OnStar for a month or two to, um, you know, have a service, level of service that you uh, maybe don't need or don't uh, need the whole year, but you can put it on for road trip season or something like that. So we mentioned the Wi-Fi hotspot. You can get that through there as well. So a lot of nice features in here uh, that I, you know, just think work pretty well, including that backup camera, which, you know what, let's just start the car for a second up. Start the car up, throw in reverse. There's that backup camera, really clear backup camera. And you can see as I turn the wheel, the guidelines turn as well. So that gives you a sense of, you know, where you're headed uh, pretty accurately, pretty, uh, I mean, roughly, but pretty accurately. Uh, so again, nice, very clear backup camera. It's a little hard to show and you can get rid of those grid lines or you can put those grid lines there if you want. So uh, again, just something nice to have. Now I will say overall parking this car, let me just turn it off again because I don't want to, uh, well, I'm using the wrong hand here. Yep, there we go. Turn it to the off position here. We'll turn it back on, but not starting. But again, overall parking this car, very, very easy to do. If we go wide angle for a second here, it's hard to show you the visibility of a car, but I can tell you that there's a lot of easy to see out windows in this car. And that trunk area being so tight, this is a super simple to park, whether you're parallel parking or just parking in a parking lot, it is super simple. So you wouldn't expect things like automatic climate control in this car and you don't have it, but you do have air conditioning here as well. So air conditioning, defrosting there, rear defroster as well. Um, so, you know, nice, uh, simple stuff down there, place to put your phone down there and you have a USB-C and a USB-A and a 12 volt port there. I think the 12 volt port has a door. There we go. Uh, so you can put your phone in there and again, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, it's all set up for you. Cup holders there, everything you need, little change area down here, another little cell phone spot down there if you want and a rear cup holder as well, or you can use that for the front. So a lot of cup holders in there, which is kind of nice. The other thing that's kind of nice is you have cruise control. A lot of smaller cars never used to come with cruise control. Now they do, so you've got good options there. And speaking of safety, in your dash here, you can look at your tire pressure monitor. So a couple of things I really like about that, I wanna talk about that right now, so let me just flip the camera around. 
So the features that I really like that I think some people don't see are something like tire pressure monitors. So when you have a low tire on this car, you don't have to wait for someone to come up behind you, start honking at you, waving at you, telling you your tire's low, that kind of thing. It tells you when your tires are dropping in pressure. So something like a seasonal drop, so winter, you know, when it gets a little cooler, it'll remind you, hey, let's top up those tires. If you have a slow leak in a tire, before you have a massive blowout and a whole ruined day, it'll say, hey, your tire's lower than uh, the other tires or your tire's lower than it should be. So you can swing by and get that tire repaired instead of having to have a whole day ruined by that kind of thing. So tire pressure monitoring, standard in this car, pretty cool stuff. The other thing you have is an oil life monitor. And if you're anything like uh, some newer drivers I know or some people that I live with, uh, you may not be paying attention to your oil changes that much by mileage. So this one has an oil life monitor that'll say, hey, I need an oil change. So it takes some of the guesswork out of those really common things like low tire pressure, oil changes when they need it, uh, just tells you when it needs it and you book it in and you get it done. Those are little features that you didn't used to get on many, many cars, but you have here and it just makes it easier to remember the things you need to remember. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that you have, you know, in addition to those tire pressure monitors, if you have to replace pieces on this car, let's say tires wear out eventually, having a smaller car with smaller tire sizes actually makes those tires much cheaper to replace. Same thing with brakes. You need smaller brakes on a smaller car, less metal takes less to replace. So a lot of the pieces and parts on this car can actually cost less because they are smaller. They don't have to be built super tough like they would be on a full-size pickup truck. And then of course you have the fuel mileage. You're towing around less weight. You don't have to do crazy hybrid or batteries or other kinds of things to get very good mileage, whether you're in town or out on the highway. And this car can handle both in town and on the highway. So let's flip the camera around and keep going through the car. So taking the wide angle view of the steering wheel here, you have a very nice feeling steering wheel. Now, of course, it's not leather wrapped or anything like that, but it does have nice texture here and you've got nice sort of gripping areas. So it's a very kind of high class steering wheel, even though, again, it's not a leather steering wheel. You have your Bluetooth controls there. So of course your Bluetooth audio. And again, with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, you can command Siri or Google or whatever else you need to do things right from there. So that can help you organize your schedule. It can help you take phone calls. It can help you do all kinds of things. And you can do that right from here, right here from your steering wheel. So kind of nice to have that. You also, let's zoom in a little bit here. There we go, there's your headlights. Automatic headlights, which I think is nice. You never have to worry about driving with your headlights off. You just set it to auto like it is right there. And as it gets dark at night, it will turn your headlights on. Power windows, power locks, power mirrors. So there's your power mirror switches. There's your power windows. You can also lock out your rear windows. It used to be a luxury option the way they have it like this. Uh, and power door locks as well. So nice features here, again, that you wouldn't always expect from an entry level or smaller car. The other nice thing is, all of the sound isn't like high-end, you know, Porsche's $14,000 audio, audio system. You still have tweeters up here. So you have a six-speaker stereo system, which is pretty much the standard in small cars and even the standard in many mid-level SUVs is a six-speaker audio system. So you have a six-speaker audio system here as well. Overall, a lot of nice things. Show you the mirror here, nothing fancy there, but we're gonna go up from the mirror to your OnStar buttons right here. So again, OnStar is a subscription service that can give you a whole bunch of features. You can kind of Google and see what kind of things you can get there. It's not always the cheapest thing to do, but it does give you this option on this car. Like I said, for road trips or something like that, you can throw it on if you want, uh, or certain, even winter seasons, you can throw that on. It's always your option to get onto that as well. Driver's side, you wouldn't expect uh, in older cars, a little card holder there, but even the mirror right there. So you've got, hello there. Uh, you've got a mirror where you can, uh, driver's side and passenger side, where you can uh, do the things you need to do with the mirrors. So let's talk about who this car is for. Well, first of all, I wanna address small cars. A lot of people think small cars, maybe they're not that safe. Well, the average small car today is far safer than any car that you or I grew up with, no matter what the size. In addition to having good crumple zones and good safety cages and airbags everywhere, uh, in that kind of sense, they are also something that makes uh, avoiding an accident very good. It's got uh, not just uh, ABS brakes, but traction control and stability control and a number of other features, including just nimble handling and decently good grip that can help you avoid accidents as well. So they are very safe cars, but who are they for? In my mind, this car is for someone who really understands value. 
It's a not, a, not that expensive car to buy. It gives you good features inside. You can do a lot of your daily running around that you would do in a bigger car in this. You can fit as many people as most of the time you're gonna take in a bigger car as well. And it gives you that value, not just in fuel efficiency, not just in vehicle purchase, but sometimes in insurance ratings as well. Also in little things like replacing parts. We've talked about that in the past, uh, tires, brakes, those kind of things. The parts themselves don't always cost as much, which can, which can be helpful. So someone who values value, save money now so you can have the money for the future and for the things you need, that's really where this car stands out and it's a really good buy and if you're interested in that kind of thing if you want to cut your vehicle payments down save on fuel and do all that kind of stuff not only is this car an option there's a whole bunch of cars here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals that compete with this car or in its class or just above its class that may be great options to cut your overall vehicle costs and get into something that probably moves up from the technology you already have in your car uh, because these small cars have a lot of uh, a lot to offer so if that interests you, make sure you subscribe to this channel because we'll be talking more about some of these small cars. And of course, if you want to see it in person, swing on down to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, where you can compare this car to all of its competitors. Thanks everybody for watching.